What's the story, folks? My name is Mikey Sculpts, and welcome to my first ever sculpting video. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how I made the worm from the movie Labyrinth. Now, I don't actually have any footage of him in my hand right now. I can't get any footage of him. I don't have him. I've sold him. He's gone. He's gone away to somebody who bought him, and he's gone. I've sent him off. So, unfortunately, I actually don't have him as of recording this video. But I did record a little section of myself holding him in the past. So, I'll just cut to that now, and I'll talk over it. So, this is the worm that I made. And, um... He kind of, he's close to my heart, um, he means a lot to me, um, myself and my partner met each other and bonded over the movie, so he kind of means a lot to me. Um, but yeah, this is him, this is the little guy, and um, might as well just cut to the chase and show you how I made him. So, first things first, you gotta have a reference photo, and there it is. Next you need some tin foil. The tin foil you're gonna use to make the skeleton of your piece and give you the general shape, but also saves you from using loads of clay. So, yeah, use tin foil. It's class. So the clay that I'm using, it's polymer clay. It's super sculpy. In fact, it's super sculpy medium. It's a nice blend between the beige and the firm. It's nice and soft, but it holds detail real well. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm basically rolling out some flat sections of clay. I'll wrap that around my tin foil just to give me some uh, shape to the worm and kind of build up a nice base of clay. These are a couple of marbles, you know, pretty conveniently colored, like close to the color of the eyes that the worm has. I'm going to use those as the eyes because I find sometimes when you sculpt eyes, the shape of them is, uh, you know, oval or, you know, it's, it's, it's not perfect and you end up having these kind of weird looking eyes so as often as I can I like to use marbles now the only problem is if you use marbles you know you end up having to sort of scale your piece off of the size of those marbles but that's fine so what I'm doing here is I'm basically just laying down some some groundwork adding a couple of uh, sausages of clay to get some shape to the face see this tool that I got it's actually class this is a spoon tool it's really really good for smoothing stuff out and as you can see, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm using the spoon tool to kind of get around the shape of the nose to get in there and do some cheek. This is some flat pieces of clay. I'm just going to put some, uh, what do you call those things on eyes? Eyelids. That's it. Yeah, I'm going to put some eyelids on this guy. Um, pretty basic ones. They'll get sculpted properly later on. I don't know what that tool is called. I think it's like a spatula -y type tool. It's like a teeny tiny spatula. And I think it's really good. It's like my favorite tool. It's literally my favorite tool. I use it for carving away clay. I use it for smoothing clay. I use it for adding detail and stuff. When you're, uh, you need to cut away some clay. An X-Acto knife is your best friend. So you can see I'm using it here to uh, get a nice straight flat edge on the eyes. So you can probably guess I'm just doing a bit of light detailing here. Adding a bit of detail to the bridge of the nose using a combination of sort of ball point tools as well as some silicone tools which are they're all awesome tools and this here it's a dental explorer tool i think it's called and it's really good for getting in there it's really good for attaching clay like if you attach clay using that you know sometimes the clay gets stuck to your fingers if you try to attach it with your fingers whereas if you use well, any of your tools of course it you know it shouldn't stick to it so it's really good for that So I've kind of skipped ahead here. Um, you can see I've done a lot of detailing. I've added holes to the head. The holes in the head are there for the hair to go into. So I'll add some glue into that later on and put the hair in there. I'm basically just doing a lot of detailing like wrinkles and stuff using the uh, Dental Explorer tool. It's really handy for that. So I'm using some surgical spirits here. It's really good. You get it on a paintbrush and rub it onto the skin of, well, rub it onto the surface of your sculpture. And uh, do it pretty aggressively and you can smooth out you know, little bits of uh, stray clay and stuff pretty well. It's really good. It's really handy. I've got a little, uh, a weird little, like, Allen key type tool here that I pulled out of a toolbox to do some scales on the worm. And, uh, I mean, I think it worked out pretty okay, actually. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if you think that it worked out okay or if you've got any tips on how it could do it better in future. So the head is pretty much done. I'm going to put it in the oven now. Let it bake. 
Gonna bake it for 15 minutes for every, I think it's six mils, something like that, of surface. But uh, put it in for about 15 minutes, it gets nice and hard. As you can see, I just rubbed my hands all over it and it uh, stayed perfectly hard. Yeah, worked out pretty okay. So I'm gonna go through this pretty quick because if I was to show you the whole process of this in any sort of semblance of real time, it would take forever. So I'm just basically adding a lot of sausages of clay all the way along this worm's body to basically give him a, some wrinkles and fold. So what I'm using here to do that is some silicone tools. The silicone tools are awesome. They're so good for using on skin because they keep the surface of the clay fairly smooth while you can still put detail in by applying pressure. They're really, really good tools to use. So, you know, if you don't have a set, get a set. So you can see I've gotten quite a bit through the worm here and I'm using my funky little Allen key tool again to add a couple of scales. You can obviously see I've skipped some time and also you can tell it's daytime. If you've been watching the video, you can probably tell that I went from daytime to nighttime and back to daytime again. Yes, this build did take me like a day and a half. So I'm using the Dental Explorer tool there to do a lot of wrinkles. And now I'm using a paintbrush with some alcohol on it and damming it really hard on the clay to give it sort of a softened pour kind of effect. And that's him uh, pretty much done so. Time to stick this boy in the oven. And uh, have a nice, well-earned break. And a cup of tea. And some handstands. Well, attempted handstands. Wait, whoa, 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 no, wait, wait, wait. He's not done. We still have to paint him. So, got some modeler paint. I obviously can't tell the name of those colors. Burnt umber and some sort of uh, olivey color. I'm gonna use that to do the uh, base layer of skin. Give him sort of a tanned look. Um, you'll probably notice I'm gonna do a lot of kind of undercoating of colors that will only come out in very small sections. I don't know why, but I like doing this. I like just adding the under layer in like big chunks so that when I go over it with the, uh, the layer above it, I, uh, well, I can afford to mess up and still have some of the color. So here we go, some reds, yellow. Don't know the names of those paints, unfortunately. Uh, to give them a bit of reddy, orangey, browny kind of tint to his wrinkles and folds. And he's got a little bit of it that goes kind of around the eye as well, so uh, I do add a little bit of that too. And there we go, like I cover the whole thing. Some blue, that's some blue. Some sort of navy looking blue. I'm not too sure what the color is, but uh, they're Vallejo paints if you're wondering, Vallejo air paints, and they are super good. And this is my first airbrush actually, as a matter of fact, and I love it. I love it to bits, it's amazing. So there's a bit of a pale blue, and there we go, yeah, a little bit of red. I'm gonna kinda give it a little bit of a bluey, purpley sort of a tint. There's not a lot of purple in it, but it's a little bit, just to, uh, I don't know, give that kind of subtle purple look. Because uh, he, he's got those sort of red undertones, so the purple kind of works in conjunction with that. Looks like I'm adding a bit of red to uh, some more of that tan color, just to give him a bit more of that uh, deeper red at the end of his tail. And, you can see I made some mistakes there with the blue. I went over areas that I shouldn't have, so I'm trying to fix it by adding a bit of color. Didn't really work, to be honest. Uh, I kind of have to go back over my mistakes later. Spraying into his wrinkles here to give him a bit of uh, depth, a bit of shadow underneath his folds. And the same with the eyelids and stuff. I want the paint to get stuck in those cracks and use it to uh, give him a bit of shape. And then I... Uh, you can see I'm going back over it in a, another lighter tan color just to um, highlight his skin a little bit. Let's highlight those little raised areas. And again, I'm going to go over it in a, a lighter skin color again just to highlight those raised bits again. He's going to remain quite tanned, but uh, you know, a little bit more highlighted. So I'm painting the eyes. I actually painted one of the eyes with the airbrush, but it was a real pain because I had to mask out the eyelids and stuff. So 
I scrapped that idea and you can see I'm taking paint out of my airbrush to paint the eyes. So it takes a few layers because the airbrush paint is quite thin and it doesn't go on particularly thick if you're using a brush. It will if you're just painting with the airbrush, but with the brush it goes on quite thin because it's airbrush paint. So I'm obviously using like a kind of an orange yellow here to uh, paint the, the outside ring of the eyes. But what I'm doing is I'm going to paint the whole circle of the eyes and then add the pupils in afterwards. I always find it amazing how the size of a pupil in an eye can really change the personality of a piece. With those tiny little pupils, he looks so scary, but if you, you know, make those pupils quite large, big and rounded, then he, you know, he gets much friendlier. It's, it's amazing. So, with those pupils done, uh, he, he's pretty much done. Uh, there's a section here that I didn't record because I actually messed up the eyes and had to go back and redo them. But I basically just put a couple of dots of white on his eyes to give him sort of highlights in the eyes. And then I added a layer of acrylic varnish uh, to give him a shine on the eyes, make him look watery. So I'm using an old wig here, um, a blue wig, to make the hair. What I'm doing with the PVA glue here is it basically just sticks all the hair together. So it makes it easier to put it in the hole that I've put on top of his head. The super glue is the glue that I use to stick it in because it dries super quick. So I basically just repeat this process for his main hairstyle and it, it actually goes around the back. He's got three on top of his head and then he's got another two coming at the back of his head. You can see them all there. Five all together to complete his hairstyle. And then he's got little tufts of blue coming out his sides. So just cut shorter pieces, do the same thing with the glue. But when I'm putting him in, I spread it with my fingers by just pressing down on him. And you get this process done pretty quickly because you're just cutting hair and sticking it in. It's pretty simple really. So I do it with the blue, and then he's got a little bit of a blonde rim sort of around his neck and in his cheeks. So I use a bit of the blonde hair to do that as well, and you can see that's basically it finished. Just using the scissors to sort of cut the hair kind of randomly in random places so it doesn't look like it's a perfect straight edge cut. And then his hair is pretty much done. And the last touch is to basically just use a hair curler to curl that front quiff of hair. And that's him. By the way, his scarf is actually uh, made out of uh, wool. It's crocheted by my missus so she made that herself and now we can celebrate now he's done What do you reckon, Ed? So that's it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, do me a favour and give me a like. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, let me know if there's anything that you want to see me make. Uh, I'd be happy to take requests and make something for a video. It would be awesome. It would be really, really fun. Uh, I also have a Hoggle model that is sold. Uh, if you give me a sec, I'll get them actually. And I made this guy on stream. And so I don't have any actual, I don't have any filmed footage of it, but I've got my stream footage of it. Um, if you want to see how I made this guy and painted him up, um, I can put together like a compilation video if you want to see that. But this is Hoggle from the movie. Um, but if you want to see anything else, something different, you know, hit me up and let me know in the comment section and I'll, you know, maybe I'll make it. Um, so thank you so much for watching, guys. If you liked it, do me a favor, give me a like, uh, hit the subscribe button, you know, all the sort of crack that needs to happen. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll catch you on the flip flop. Hello.
Did you say hello? No, I said hello, but that's close enough. <laughs>